is a story of Honorable James Opio Wandai. A native son of Uganja, Sahaya County stands as a beacon of transformative leadership. James Opio Wandai, a member of parliament, and the leader of the minority in Kenya National Assembly, through to consecutive terms in parliament. His impact resonates not only in Uganja but across Kenya, raised amidst the very soil he now represents. His unwavering commitment and indomitable spirit have heralded a new era for Uganja and a testament to the power of local-born leadership. Raised in a devout Christian family, education was his path to a brighter future. But little did anyone know that the simplicity and easygoing nature concealed a strong will. James Opio Wande's journey into the world of politics started at the University of Nairobi, where he found himself under the guidance of a political giant, Right Honorable Rahilo Denga. Together with his comrades, they transformed the Students and Youth Congress of Ford, Kenya. But it was in 1997, amidst the fervent calls for constitutional transformation and mass actions. Wandai, as an activist, he stood resolute, defying the might of the entrenched establishment. It was a moment of reckoning where the fire of his activism burned brightest. However, he was arrested and imprisoned, and he paid a heavy price for his unrelenting pursuit of justice and reforms, yet, even in captivity, his spirit remained unbroken. His sacrifice during that pivotal year etched his name into the annals of Kenya's fight for a more equitable and just society. It was truly a transformative moment. For Honorable James Opio Wandai, that forged him into a beacon of resilience and an unyielding force for positive change. Emerging from this dark period, Wandai chose a different path, one that led him into the corporate world. For over a decade, he navigated the corporate landscape, honing his skills in strategic management and leadership. His journey took him to different parts of Kenya and beyond. His ability to communicate and engage with diverse stakeholders was instrumental in achieving business objectives. But politics was never far from Juan Day's heart in 2013. He made a triumphant return to active politics, this time as the Member of Parliament for Uganja constituency. As an opposition MP, he emerged as a formidable force, challenging the ruling party and even facing suspension for his unwavering commitment to his principles. A showdown is looming in the National Assembly this coming week, with ODM MPs threatening to start blowing whistles at Speaker Justin Muturi should he block Wandai from attending parliamentary sessions. <laughs> Led by ODM Chairman John Buddy, the MPs have termed Wandai's absence in Parliament as a disservice to the people of Ugunja. Justin Muturi must respect the rule of law. And as my colleagues have said, Tuesday, Wandai must be back in Parliament. If he will not be back in Parliament, Muturi will wait for us on Wednesday. Natu Ogopi, Natu Ogopi Tutamuanyesha. Come next Tuesday, we want to see Opia Wandai in the House. Speaker Muturi has referred the matter to the Committee on Privileges, which is expected to report back to the House on Tuesday. Then I want to remind them. I want to remind them that they haven't seen yet what, what they saw was basically Kiyoji. When the courts declare that Uhuru had won the presidency, they said the Supreme Court did a good job. When the same court says that Honorable Wandai must go to parliament, no, 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 the court is wrong, so a committee is formed to look into that. When Dai Ui's audience director of political affairs declined to appear before the Privileges Committee despite summons and has vowed to attend house sessions once MPs come back from Brussels. But the issues that confront this country currently, which is financial, near financial crunch, have to be dealt with. We are for the people. We are the only movement that can really address the people issues in this country. 
But let me say this to my fellow Kenyans. Uh, as a country, we are known for our resilience. We have gone through turbulence in the past, but we have always emerged stronger as a people. So this situation that we are facing is not exceptional. In the fullness of time, if we can gather the courage to reason together, we shall be able to overcome. So let's not lose hope. But I want to assure you also, the people, that we in the progressive movement, the Mula Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party, the movement for the defense of democracy, we are going to stand by you. We are not going to forsake you. Within the walls of parliament, James Opio Wan Dai took on the role of the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee, where he spearheaded efforts to ensure accountability in government financial operations. Under his leadership, the PAC delivered up to date scrutiny of the Auditor General's reports, leading to enhanced revenue allocation for county governments. Uh, first of all, I'll thank the Chairman, the Vice Chair, and members of the committee for having done a wonderful job. Actually, you pushed the image of this house to another level in terms of uh, handling effects. Having uh, handled the accounts for the year 2016-2017 and your focus on 2017-2018 financial year, this is a good job and I say congratulations. Mr. Speaker, the report is very comprehensive. The report has touched on every sector. In Kenya's historically highly contested August 2020 to general elections, James Opio Wande's dedication to the common man is unwavering. His audacity to stand against the, the dreaded finance bill 2023 even in the face of demonstrations, countered with tear gas and arrests, paints a vivid picture of his love for Kenya. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of roots, and indeed we pride ourselves as such. It has been tradition, and in fact, it has been part of our rules as provided for by the standing orders, that whenever petitions of whatever kind, petitions of whatever nature, be they petitions calling for removal from offices, of commissioners, be they petitions concerning the welfare of members of the public out there. It has been our tradition that petitions touching on matters that are actively before courts are not entertained. In fact, this House has been very cautious right from the time I joined it in 2013 not to entertain any petition of whatever kind from whomsoever and from wherever that will touch on issues which are active before court. The speaker, I came midway through your statement and I take note of one particular petition, one by Reverend Tumbi, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> in his petition, among other things, he has asked that the four commissioners were involved in convening of meetings to appoint legal representation against the rules of the commission. I, I think so. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, the deputy CEO of IBC, Madam Ruth Kulundo, is in court on, among other things, convening a meeting with the four commissioners to decide on legal representation. So this House will be contravening its own rules, and indeed the law generally, by entertaining a petition that is touching on issues that are actively before court. I don't see the agents. We can wait for the court, the court matter to be concluded. I want us to take note of the fact that the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya 2010 makes it at Article 3, sub Article 1 an obligation for every single person to respect, uphold 
and to defend the Constitution. That responsibility, that obligation is even more so pertinent for some of us who have taken oath to office to defend that Constitution, Mr. Speaker. We have come to a point where we seem to be asking you to make a decision, to make a determination on a matter that is so well provided for, so expressly provided for by not only the Constitution, the Political Parties Act, but also by our own standing orders. It is also in our interest okay. that the country runs uh, properly. Because if the country runs properly and everything it seems to be uh, uh, fine, everybody else is happy. You cannot have a country which is uh, basically uh, being choked by what you call debts and also mismanagement. His stint in the Nairobi cells is a testament to his unyielding commitment in a political climate marred by uncertainty and a regime fixated on taxing rather than tending to Kenyans, Wandangi emerges as a steadfast force. His courage, like tear gas, is impossible to ignore. In the aftermath of Kenya's hotly contested 2020 to general election, the nation witnessed a razor-thin divide between the main presidential contenders, and it remains a mystery who really emerged the true victor in that fateful August 2020 to election. What's painfully clear is the aftermath. The country roared in protest, demanding relief from soaring living costs exacerbated by a draconian finance bill that seemed to tax everything. Sadly, Kenyans now pocket less than half their hard-earned income. This is the first time we have come across a bill proposed by the regime in power. A bill that is totally insensitive to the plight of the people. The speaker, how deceitful can we be? How can you go around the country promising hapless Kenyans, poor Kenyans, heaven, and yet six, seven months down the road, you come up with a bill that essentially seeks to chalk them to death, the speaker. Enter James Opio Wandai, who bravely spearheaded the initial bipartisan talks through Parliament. However, it quickly collapsed, leading Azimio La Umoja withdrawal from the talks and hitting the streets in defiance. Even then, the government maintains a deaf ear to the cries of the Kenyan people. We have refused to sit back and watch as Kenyans are being harassed to fix cash crunch caused by economic mismanagement wasteful spending, corruption, and skewed and incompetent hiring into critical public positions. We reject this backward march. And that's why we are saying that unless that bipartisan process is opened up to include external players, including the church, the student unions, the workers, the youth, the women, and everybody else, they cannot be allowed to proceed. And that is going to be the point of departure. The speaker, you cannot be on one hand condemning alcoholism and drugs and so on and so forth. And on the other hand, you are removing people from gainful employment and throwing them to the wilderness. What a contradiction is that, Mr. Speaker. The majority of the people who have died in the villages have died because of hunger, lack of food. I can tell you, who did this survey or research to come up with this need for houses for Kenyans? Who asked you for houses? Who asked you? Why are you addressing a problem that is not there? Why can't you deal with a problem which is there, which is lack of food? If we want to save Kenyans, let us not indulge in this kind of scandalous adventure. We cannot afford to get into this kind of scandalous adventure when Kenyans are dying of hunger. Deal with the immediate problem, which is to address the issue of, of lack of food. That even as we stand here to please our masters out there, our masters who are watching us, yes. you must understand that the bigger, greater masters are the people who voted us. 
not those who impose us on these positions. Yes, speaker. Yes, speaker. This house cannot go down in history as a house which is regarded the plight of the people. This house must go down in history as a house which stood with the people at their hour of need. How can raising of taxes on fuel from 8 to 16 percent be classified as an effort to lower the cost of living? People want food. People don't eat government. You give them food and they leave the streets. Just tell Kenyans how food will be affordable now, today. And they will leave the streets. We did raise an alarm over the financial catastrophe are building up in the country with indications that we are facing bankruptcy as inflation reaches new highs, food prices skyrocket and the country's finances dry up. We believe that this near collapse of our finance sector is exacerbated by high government and priority spending high taxes that have hurt businesses, massive loan obligations to China, weakening shilling and foreign exchange reserves at their lowest levels ever. That the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has put Kenyans in an existential struggle for survival with the cost of basic necessities becoming untenable. This trend must be resisted. And reversed. And therefore, the issues that we have framed as a new, the both three or four, you know them, need for labouring. Okay? Are issues that have come from the people. And top of top of top of which is the matter of cost of living. And we have said that as a matter of fact, don't even negotiate the matter of cost of living. We'll do it one of our conditions, one of our items in the agenda. Azimio La Umoja then sought more structured talks called. The National Dialogue Committee currently holding at the Bomas of Kenya weekly between the two entrenched factions, UDA and Azimio La Umoja. NADCO led by Kenya's former VP. His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Musioka forms the team bridging both sides. With James Opio Wandai playing a pivotal role, one day's journey is a testament to the power of determination, resilience, and unwavering commitment to principles. In the heart of Uganda and also in the nation of Kenya, his legacy continues to unfold, leaving an indelible mark on the land and its people. In the ever-evolving story of Uganda constituency, James Opio Wandai remains a man to watch. And so, the story continues in the land of Uganda, where the past meets the present and the future remains unwritten.